Robin, it's Maxie. Your phone went straight to voicemail, so I assume you're busy doing something medically important. But I wanted to let you know that I talked to Spinelli, and he feels horrible about helping Patrick spam you, so you can relax. Whatever you see on your website now is for real, okay? I have to go. Bye. Exactly what website are you referring to? Oh, my... Cousin Robin started this blog to track her pregnancy, and she kind of dissed her baby's father, and he used Spinelli to get back at her by spamming her website. Oh, um... <sighs> For a moment, I thought that your friend Spinelli had caught some footage on his camera phone earlier. I'm wondering that... streamed video of you and Sunny doing the deed on your desk? That would be career suicide, wouldn't it? certainly that? would, Maxie. Well, I love my job too much to risk losing it. Besides, been there, done that. Pardon? I just know what it's like to have a deeply personal moment broadcast on the internet, and I would never, ever subject anyone to that kind of humiliation. Okay, do you see what's going on here? Your organization and mine, family and associates, the lines are blurred. There are a lot of people to put at risk, including Lulu Spencer. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Stone Cold must grant me refuge, for Mr. Sir will certainly exact a terrible price for what I unwittingly witnessed with my own traumatized eyes. Kyle had a webcam running the entire time we were having sex. He was streaming the video on the internet for everyone to see. I can't imagine how hurtful that would be. Mm, I got over it. But what I'm trying to tell you is you don't have to worry about me gossiping about you. I can be discreet. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Maxie. Because being an assistant at your level, not to mention you're developing friendships with designers like Federico, could go to a girl's head. I am completely blown away by this opportunity. I'm very grateful for the people that I'm getting to meet. I'm also hoping you will take me with you to Milan for Fashion Week, and I would never do anything to ruin that. Good. See that you don't. I'll sign for it. Are you Kate Howard? Oh, um, no, but I am. Mm, yep, same. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Carl came through for me again. Are those Carl Levant's new designs? Mm -hmm. Top secret. People would kill to get a sneak peek at his new winter line, but he is letting me see it. You see, Maxie, this? This is what comes from developing strong relationships, from developing trust. This is how discretion pays off. Humble apologies for interrupting what is clearly a mobular moment, but the jackals need is dire. We were finished, weren't we? Just don't let Rick and Trevor force you into open hostility against my father. You'll be playing right in their hand. The Son of Darkness sounds ominous. Um, if the Jackal's arrival just undermined tell, a piece of court, tell, so tell me what happened. Pardon? You barged in here for a reason. Sonny. What, something about Sonny? Oh, yes. The Jackal's very life is in jeopardy. Why? Well, I, I'm, I'm not allowed to speak of it. Um, Mr. Sir said that my life would be forfeited if I opened my mouth. Okay, then I would keep your mouth shut. Wise as always, Zen Master. But even a grasshopper needs someone with whom to confide, if only to assist in unraveling the truth behind Maximista's very strange reaction to the sight of the fashionista and Mr. Sir in flagrante. Stop, stop, stop. You need to say something I can understand or you need to go. Maximista and I walked in on Kate and Sonny having sex on Kate's desk. The intrusion on Mr. Corinthos, sir, with his lady love was entirely unintentional, but when I tried to explain that to Mr. Corinthos, sir, her, he preemptively threatened my continued existence. Stone Cold, I'm not ready to die! So you're not, you're not going to die. Sonny's not going to do anything. Just respect his privacy. Well, That's all you got to do. Unfortunately, the chosen venue for Mr. Corinthos, sir, and the fashionista's carnal bliss was far from private, being, as it were, on the desk of the fashionista's in her not-so-inner sanctum. Did you knock? Some cult's point is well taken, mm -hmm. but see, my, my quandary extends beyond the simple mechanics of the embarrassing encounter in, into the troubled blonde one's strange reaction. Uh, okay, rather than expressing dismay at, at, at witnessing this, this raw display of sexuality, Maximisa almost seemed intrigued. This is really between you and Maxie. Indeed, she even opined on the allure of, 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 a, of a man who would throw caution and etiquette to the wind to satisfy his come partner. Come in, please it, it come in. Even Claudia Zakara is here to see you. 
Send her in. Your phone call, I'm not really done. Okay, we... You know what, Diane, can you help him with his problems right I'm now, please? I'm really not the best well, person to help Mr. Graff. It's really billable. Well, I'll do my best. of justice is quite certain that this conversation falls under attorney-client privilege because if not the jackal is a dead man as long as i bill jason then yes you may retain me for legal counsel and anything we say is privileged okay well i am hopelessly devoted to fair maximista but apparently my lady love craves desk sex with mr corinthos sir mm -hmm. Yummy. <clears throat> Come in. Don't forget you have lunch today at the Metro Court with the new photographer. Oh, that's right, with Marcus Henry. Okay, did you make the reservation? Yes, they are holding your table. That's fine. Um, send flowers to Carl. Call Kazumi. Okay. Would you like a note with those? Sure. Um, congratulations on a work of genius. It was a privilege to get a preview. Um, any specifics for the flowers? No, tell Kazumi to use her judgment, Carl. Really outdid himself this time. The sketches are fabulous. And don't let anyone in the office. I can't violate his trust by letting anyone else see them. You got it. Have a great lunch. Maxie. Maxie, when you talk to Kazumi, can you please tell her to change out the flowers in the house? I want some spring blossoms now. Will do. Okay. Okay. Bye. was astonished at Maximus's reaction to the sight of the fashionista and Mr. Sir using her desk to know each other in the biblical okay. sense. Let me just summarize this in English. Mm. Sonny and Kate were having a quickie in her office. You and your Maxie walked in on them. You were horrified. <laughs> Maxie was titillated. Is that correct? It was a bit more traumatic than the brusque lady of justice appears to comprehend. Why? Why? I'm still not getting what your problem is with all of okay, this. Okay, Maximista extolled an attraction for a, a dark and mysterious man of danger who would throw caution to the wind to take his pleasure at any given time on any given surface. Mr. Spinelli, has Maxi Jones ever directly declared to you that she is attracted to Sonny Corinthos? She seemed more interested in the abstract, to wit, a man of Mr. Sir's character, one who cares little for convention or propriety. <laughs> Your maxi has just dropped a hint so large it would fill the superdome. Do you even remember our conversation, Mr. Spinelli? Harvest the fruit? Carpe diem, indeed. Take the initiative. Show maxi that you want her and will not suffer propriety to get to her. Within the legal bounds, mm. of course. Do you, you do want her, don't you? Oh, yes. Then, <laughs> damn it, man, go and get her. <laughs> I'm sorry, no time to linger. The time has come for the Jackal to seize the initiative and whatever else he can get his hands on. Um, is, is Jason here? <laughs> Maximista. Oh, he's not what it looks like. Oh, Maximista, your message has been received. My message? I never called you. It was your siren call that brought me back, ready to fulfill your secret desires, throwing caution to the wind. I will carpe diem. I will carpe other things, too. It is time to take what we want, where we want it. Okay, whatever, Spinelli. Will you help me get all this stuff back together? Huh? <laughs> 